In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 27th day of May, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2022. We continue with our, our series on faith development. I have gotten quite a good number of reactions concerning the prayer of the Holy Rosary. And uh, some are giving personal testimonies. The wonderful things they have seen and the miracles they have experienced through the prayer of the Holy Rosary. Gracious married women, as we said, we are getting ourselves ready for 31 days journey of prayer as you pray for your husbands. And I said, those of you who want to engage Mother Mary on this, I said, as I always do, I'll be able to engage each one of you separately. So don't mind. We'll be able to do this together. I can't wait for the day to start this journey together with you. Today, having concluded the Holy Rosary, today we look at the blessings that we experience by serving others. When we serve others, there's something that happens to us. And allow me to share with you the blessings that uh, are accrued, if you like, when we serve others. Benefit number one, or blessing number one. When we serve others, we get blessings. And the first blessing is that serving allows us to discover and develop our spiritual gifts. I did a reflection or devotions on spiritual gifts. And I said, each one of us is gifted differently. And I said that uh, some of our gifts that we would want to have, we pray for them. Others, we have gifts that are not developed because we have remained timid and quite inactive and spiritually tepid, deliberately or otherwise. What we say is that uh, when we serve others, we are able to develop. Maybe you never knew that, um, for example, one of the spiritual gifts is, um, of course it is serving, it's say serving is a spiritual gift. Maybe you never knew that you have this gift up until when you started serving. Okay? So you have a spiritual gift. 1 Corinthians 12 compares the church to a human body. Just like our bodies are made of many parts, serving specific functions, the church is made up of people with different skills and abilities. Alone, these pieces aren't very useful, but together we create something very beautiful. And that is why I have always said, men and the women who have matured spiritually are never insecure when another person is doing very well. For example, if as a priest, I am working in the parish with another priest, maybe we are two or three, and one priest has a special gift of administration. I don't have to be so fussy. I don't have to be so petty, if you like, that I'm thinking that, you know, Father is doing very well, Father is shining. Father is not shining, Father has known his gift and he is making use of it. Maybe I have another gift, but because of my tepidity of spirit, and because of my pettiness, ignorance, and arrogance, I am not able to work on my gift. You can imagine if I did my gift very well, and the other priest did his very well, and the other priest did very well. You can imagine how beautiful that parish would be. For example, one is gifted in administration. The other one is gifted in this other one. 
the other one is gifted in this other one. Because we can't be the same, all of us, we beautify our place. So, the more we serve others, the more we develop the gifts that we have. It is a blessing, and blessing number one. Blessing number two. Serving others allows us to experience miracles. A good example given on this, it is in chapter 2 of the Gospel of John, precisely verses 1 through 11. Those of you who understand the Bible of head, you will know that this is the first miracle or sign, if you like. Marriage in Cana. This miracle has people that we don't talk about. And they are the ones I want to mention this great day. The young men who were sent to fill the jars with the water. Those men, we really talk about them. We talk about the MC. We talk about Jesus. We talk about Mother Mary. And then the, the bridal party. The, the husband and wife. The bride and the groom. Uh huh. Do we ever talk about those, those, those Kibarua men? Do you talk about those boys? I call them boys. You know, in every marriage or in, in every wedding party, there are, for example, just boys who just go to eat. When I was a boy, we used to go to eat, just to eat. And uh, we would feel very bad if we have gone for a wedding and we have not been fed properly as if we had contributed. <laughs> but there were those boys. They were told, fill the jars with the water. Those boys did exactly that. And through their serving, they were in the center, in the middle of a miracle happening. They experienced a miracle through their serving. We did talk about them. But when, especially when we allow ourselves to remain obscure in whatever it is that we are doing, but we are consistently serving and constantly serving, we, many times, will be in the middle of miracles that God performs in our lives. Remember, miracles are done through us. There is no miracle that is abstract. Think of all the miracles in the Bible. There were people involved. People were involved. The miracle of the healing of the, of the paralytic. There were four men involved. In fact, there were others. You know, there is a group, there are two groups of people there who are very important and they are in the middle of, um, of a miracle happening. There are those who blocked the, the entrance because they, were, they needed to see other things. But even after blocking the entrance up to, to the extent that now the four men had to lower him through the roof, the same, same people who had blocked the entrance, they were there and they saw the miracle happening. They may not have done anything anyway, <laughs> but they experienced. But the four men were in the middle of that. They served and they experienced. They served and they experienced. Think of Lazarus and the rolling of the stone. There are those who removed the stone. Go through every miracle and you will see there are people who, who are there when the miracle happens. Whenever we serve, in one heart and spirit, from the depth of our hearts voluntarily, we are able to experience miracles. Number three, serving allows us to experience the joy and peace that comes from obedience. Let me read for you First Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. 
so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. Did you know, good people, that serving is a way of worship? Serving is worship. Number two, serving is a way of expressing gratitude. Therefore, there is a lot of peace that comes from serving, and we experience that. We are happy because we have put a smile on other people's faces and hearts. Asante. I want to stop there and bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a productive Friday. Thank you.